You are listening to a piece of the Salasin.10 podcast area. You are listening to a piece of the Salasin.10 podcast area. So we try to improve the health sector in Africa through computer science. Hmm. So we use Python and Django a lot because we do a lot of data, like data analysis and data processing. So like Python and JavaScript is our main kind of things. But we use both Python and JavaScript on the back end, but like 70% of our product is Python heavily on the back end. So our stack is Python. Docker, if you are familiar with Docker, Elasticsearch, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Let me see if I can do the settings. Let's see now. Okay. Um, are you ready or do you want me to? Yeah, just just a minute. Okay. So this one gets a hit call. How many of you here are in the IT industry? Yeah. Scripting. It's too easy. Slightly bigger, that would be good. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. What? I don't know what happened. You, you gotta give me some learning material, then I'll learn about it. Yeah, go ahead and see if you want. But you're not in Engineer Smile channel. Huh? You're not there, Engineer Smile. I am. Maintainers? I, I am, but I'm not active. I'm passive. How passive? Very passive. Very passive at the moment. I haven't looked at it for a couple of weeks. So if we ping you, then you are... I may get it, may or may not get it when I open the Slack. I also don't open Slack. I haven't been open Slack. I don't use Slack. Then how do you get a message or email, right? IRC. IRC? Why can IRC link to Slack? They say they already removed the gateway months. I can still use it, so they don't care. Oh, okay. To see what Ling Guang Ying was saying about the financial status. Okay, so what? 
have you been doing Python like with real crazy kind of projects? No, not really. So two years, how many of you have been doing two years Python? No. Two years or more of you that I mean. <laughs> two or more, two to be more. Total difference. About one year. About one year. One year. Okay. Or less, yeah. Okay, so the talk is going to be like a yeah. kind of like advanced kind of more. Uh, how many of you have been doing anything with decorators, generators, that kind of thing? Okay, you know about decorators. Awesome. Okay. So for the rest of you, who is going to play the big kind of? <laughs> but anyway, I'm trying to explain my You know about that. So okay, Python meta programming. <laughs> so you can find me on GitHub, the black dude, you know, it's kind of crazy. And by the end of the talk, you know, you feel like this kind of, you know, maybe I'm crazy or kind of weird person. Some of the things works on Python 27. And how many of you use Python 3? Uh, 36. Okay, 36. 36. So no <coughs> Python 27. Or a few Python 27. Python 27. Both. 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 Okay. Okay, like some of the stuff works on Python 2, like the decorators a little bit, but some like doesn't work at all. So that's why I said you can use Python 3 or higher. Okay? Like I said, some features might work on 2, but advanced them even 5 because I haven't tried it. If you want to try, good luck. <laughs> okay. Um, advanced software components, Python 3 and meta programming. When you have too much of either, yeah, I don't think so. Maybe you can see. Let's see here it goes. So meta programming, what it is? It's like code that manipulates your code. You know. So it's it's not like your day-to-day -day kind of thing you do. You know. It's like it's like it's like you. You know about decorator. You know like. Decorators like you write code that say okay, you know, like you change some code, yeah. right? right? Yeah. Okay, so that's what meta programming is. When you talk about meta programming, you're talking about decorators, meta classes, descriptors. Okay, since okay, I need to do anything to code. So, why would you care about this kind of thing, like decorators or like meta programming at all? So, it helps you better understand how Python works. Hmm. Like Python or Django or Flask or any pyramid or any framework we use. Because if you go into it, like the short scope of those projects, you see these crazy things are happening, like the scriptures, you know, like this kind of thing. So, again, extensively used in the frameworks and the libraries. And again, if you kind of like me a bit, it's fun, you know. But like, you know, like sometimes just go into the Python source code, see how, you know, how things work. I mean, it's not easy to understand, but, you know. Kind of fun. So to solve the practical problem is this, like you know, right? You all know what this means, right? But don't repeat yourself. So. It sucks, right? So don't repeat yourself. I do it for so it's tedious, why hard to be crazy to modify. You know, it's like a pain in the ass. Okay, this all is okay. Again. Dive into meta programming, highlight some Python 3 features. It's probably a brain, maybe. Whatever. Dive into the end. Anyone who wants to know how things really works. If you want to build a framework or a library, okay. And code as you want to increase job security. <laughs> 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 Go and build job security and maybe crazy code it. Because again, it's not, it's not something you do like you know, your day to day job. Okay, so we are programming based debugging with free. So we like we all do debugging with Python, right? I mean we actually we all do we all debug our code. But like, you know, we are like humans, we are not perfect. We don't write perfect code. Mm -hmm. So we make errors, we have to debug. Right. So and if you've been doing Python for a while, you know like uh, okay, you know. The first thing they will teach you maybe in university or like if you taught yourself how to code, like the first thing you try to do is print, right? 
if you have a problem, maybe you go in into the middle of your function, you say, okay, print. So that, okay, to make sure like your function is running. If you want to know the true way to the box, it's using different, like, different functions. So let's get into some coding. How many of you have used IPython? Cool. Okay, use IPython. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so, okay, IPython is like, uh, it's like extended, you know, like the Python terminal, you know, the Python record. You know, like with IPython, you have syntaxes, you have they do like indentation for you, everything like automatically. So it's pretty cool if you want to try it with Java. So let's say, yeah, let's run the function. Can I raise this here a bit? So if you say like add this,
joke. As you can see already, we are doing like the writing, which is the repeater self, right? Hmm. So uh, you, are the, you are using print like three times. Everything you are doing, you are using print, right? So the solution here is what? Like if you are doing this kind of thing, what is the first thing you can think of? How can you like, you know, eliminate this? Exactly. Of course, if you know, but if you don't know, like, okay, it's how difficult it will be, like, doing that stuff, like, okay, like, what can I do? Like, one thing may be, like, you'll be looking at this, maybe, for Google. Okay, try to find a library, maybe, or something that already have kind of debugging for you. But there's a simpler way, the correct way, right? that creates a wrapper around the function for you. If you have used closures, more kind of a closure, you know, you, you know what closure is, right? You know, like you have a function that's written in the function. Mm. You know? So, mm. not, not like exactly a closure, but kind of a closure. You know? So if you understand like a like, closure, then you understand what like the decorator is. Because with like with a closure, you can have access all the local variables <coughs> like, um, like the argument passed to the after function, you can have access to the local function. So it is again like the kind of the same thing. Okay. So yeah, like the wrapper is a new function that works exactly like the original function, same argument, same return value, except that the whole thing is being like carried out. Like you know, you do something like inside the generator. Hmm. Yeah, like inside the wrapper. Right. So So in, in like uh, like this decorator here, like you can see like the outer function is the decorator. Like there's two functions. There's the debug, there's a dev function. Alright. So like basically we just like a normal decorator, what you will see like you won't see this. Like all these things here, these font people and on. And by the way, like this thing is one of the things if this will only work on Python 3. Like, whenever you see like an asterisk inside your argument, anything that comes after that have to be have to be passed as like keyword arguments. And this only works on Python three. It doesn't work on Python three. If you try your Python three seven, it will not work. It will give an error. So this is one of the things Python three. Python three from Python three, I think the zero is like was available. So. And again, again, like why I said this is more kind of advanced decorator because this decorator, like you can give it, like um, like an argument if you want, or if you want, you can like it's like um, optional. I can give it an, like you can give it an argument because you can give it an argument. It works like both ways. Okay. So like that's that's what we are doing here. So we like we make it like a decorator or like a closure, and then we check it. If function is true, which is that if we pass an argument to the decorator, maybe like a prefix, like this here, and then like if it's not, if like we don't pass anything, we don't pass it. So we do some kind of, you know, like, you know, okay, anyone knows what the partial function does in Python? You know the partial function does in Python? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So, yeah. So you know, when, when you call a partial, it's like call like it's like call itself. It's like call the function itself, and then just we, we, like we call the function again, like the debug function again, but without the function, we just pass like the prefix. It wraps the function with these arguments, right? Sorry. It wraps the function with these arguments. I don't. I don't get it. Yeah. And like does parcel wrap the function with these arguments? No. Like when, when you say when you call the partial function, it's like it's like call myself again. But in this case, it's like calling the debug function again without passing like func because func is not so like func is not passed like there's nothing passed like there's no argument. So that's that like partial is only means like okay like call myself again so with whatever you provide. It's like call no. me again. Recursive function. Sorry. It's like a recursive. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of recursive or not recursive. It's just like because it's only do like like one time. Yeah. Like there is no room in going on. Mm. Just like one time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if the if font is non return partial, and then yeah, we say okay. We like we, we like we get a message. We say message about the prefix cross font. Anyone knows what this qual name does? You know what the qual name does? Okay. Good. No, like for the ones who don't know, the quality give you like the fully qualified name, and we will see this later on. Like if you if like if you call this thing like inside a class, it will give you like the class and then the function name. Oh, like the full. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Like the full. You know, like there's there's instead of quality, you can just use like just the name. But this is only Python three. Yeah, this is Python three. Yeah. Yeah, this is Python three. So and it's more kind of advanced. There's this kind of. Raymond Kitenga, anyone who is Raymond Kitenga? You know, with one of the core developers, one of the core part of the developers. Then I watch a talk, he, he, he advised people to use this, not to use just the name anymore. <coughs> it's like the fully qualified name if you want to do something like this. So which is which, which is great. And also the wraps. Anyone knows what the wraps like helper function does from the font tools? It modifies the helpers to have the same name as the no, no, no. I mean this, this, this thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the <coughs> wrap yeah, 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 the wrap separator. Yeah, in, in other words, it modifies the wrapper so it has the same name as the original person. Yeah, kind of, but it's like, it's okay, yeah. like, it's like the simple answer is it just provides metadata. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does. It modifies the wrapper and then makes the original function. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Like you can, yeah, because hmm. if you don't use wrap. In your when there's an exception, you, the name gets just better and it doesn't help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like you don't get any 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 like information about your code, like any information about your capability. You just say like maybe like function debug main whatever, like that's it. Like it doesn't provide any information. So if you use wrap, it is kind of weird. You are using the decorator inside the decorator. So, <laughs> so but you need to use wrap. But if like in some code like this, because I was looking at the Django source code like uh, I think yesterday or something, they have some decorators that they don't you know do wraps at all, so it's kind of crazy. You know? But like you know that's what is being written like for a long time. So, yeah. yeah. So if you know like what decorator means, so, but it's more kind of
keyword argument you pass. And again, that's only Python 3 available. Python 2 will now be able to work. Okay. So again, you know, like because of that, you have the like, functionality yeah. one you can pass with and you can go here more. Do you all understand like what this topic here? Yeah. Okay. No way. Then how decorators comes by? Sorry? So we can use decorator actually as something that some seems similar to decorator. So we are not like we wrap a function inside another function without using decorator. Okay, like a closure. Inside a decorator, but without the alliance. Yeah, what you mentioned is like the calling convention, like there's two kind of ways you can call like a decorator. Like uh, for instance, like you, you can call it you can call it like you can assign a decorator your function like as just a normal calling convention, like you know, the way you call like for example like my funk like you know equals to like some funk, but then in this case you just pass like okay, the, like the decorator and stuff. This is what you're saying, right? Yeah. So like you can call your decorator like this, but this again is not advice. So like you will maybe see like you know like the art symbol and then the decorator and then the function that you know. Is, is, is that what you're saying? Like they need to know this. Yeah. So you can call your decorator like this.
So the big picture for for this stuff, right? Like why so you get like the body code is isolated to a single location. So you no longer have like you know like your like for example the uh, your decor record and like the actual code like in one place, right? And this makes it easy to change your disabled. So we can you can go and change like the decorator that that is like you know like the user of the function like the user like like for example the client here like don't need to worry about anything like you know what happens on the decorator side because they're too like different and like you know like for example in a big company you know like in this case maybe you have two separate teams working on things like you know you can think of it as like a library like for example the Django developers and the people who use Django you know so. They are, you know, like they're doing different things. What they do with Django, like you don't need to worry about any of that. So it's like the same here, you know. Like what goes on the debugging code, like on, on your debugging files, the users like don't need to worry about that. Again, the users are equal to need to worry about it at all. Like this is like the whole kind of idea about the query. It's like isolation, like separating from sounds. So one man asked, okay, like, can we maybe like you know debug all the methods of a class, you know? But like most of the times, what you will see is just like debugging like functions, like normal functions, like just what I just told you. Most of the times, like maybe like you say, like seventy percent of the time, like have you seen like we have people debug like a class and everything, like sorry, assign a decorator to a whole class. So like, you know, like 90, like 80 percent of the time, what you will see is just what I showed you. I mean, if you go to the Django source code, the Python source code, that's what you will see. So, the next thing, okay, debug the client. Debug like all the methods of the class, and you decorate all methods at once, and you do everything at once, like, you know. Yes, you can do the class, decorate. So, what's the idea behind the class decorator? So, okay, like have a function that works through like the class dictionary. You all know Python is heavy in the add in, I don't know, but like dictionary, right? Mm. You know, like Python, like maybe 90% of the Python library itself is based on dictionary. They move there between like, you know, using dicks, right? So, Walk through the class dictionary. Like your class, your function, they are just like dictionaries. If you understand that, Python will be easy for you to understand. So, the idea of walk through the class dictionary, identify the callables, like the methods, like the things that are callable, the things that you can call, which are methods inside the class, and then wrap them with the decorator, simple as that. Value. 
like who's that you wish are and then we say okay that then like the end. So like the end like define like the function, you know like each function is in like in a class have the key. So it's like uh, it's like a unique kind of identifier for each method in our class. So we have say okay for the value is like the method itself. So we get the name like the key value and then we check if the value is a callable like okay, it's like this is a method, and then we just set up. You know, like anyone knows what this set attribute means? It's like a brain surgery with Python. Like, uh, yeah, so you say we call set data on the class. You say okay, we pass in the key like the unique key, and then we just call the debug function up here. You say okay, debug. Same, right? But again, you will like you know most of the times you won't see this, but it's just like you know, just like like one, two, three, four, five lines. You have it done. This is like the whole thing. And then again, you return the class. Yeah. And here, as you can see, we have it here. So this is how you can assign the same way as you assign the decorator of the function. You see, like, you do the same thing. This is how you assign the decorator of function. You can assign the same way to a class. See, just a debug method. All your methods in your class have decorators now. You know, instead of assigning just like a single one, 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 one. Again, that's like dry, but if we just have to, if we can do that, and most of the time that's what you will do, like you will see, you know. Because like sometimes you want maybe like five methods to be decorated, maybe part of five methods to be so you know you see like okay. Or even like sometimes they will need everything, but they will just assign like, you know, single single with this kind of you have everything at once. Then that means you get everything. So let's see. Do you understand it? Yeah. Have you done this before? Yeah, no. How many of you have done this before? Okay, just you. This is how you have the power to change the We can rewrite part of the class itself, change access for example. So this is this is like another kind of crazy thing which like it's really cool at the time for me. Okay, this is like an attribute decorator kind of and like this is like a little bit different than again you know like you know that in Python you can maybe 95% or 99% you can change everything right pretty much everything if you, if you, if you have used the Donda method you know the Donda method you know like get uh, set like get item set item like Donda get Donda set Donda those are like the scriptures. Maybe we will talk a little bit about them. Maybe I'm not sure. But with Python, you can almost change everything like the way you want. It's not easy, but you can do it. 
So we are like, that's what we are trying to do here. Like, we, are, we want to change the get attribute. Like, you think that when you call, like, when you, when you have a class, when you say, like, um, this, the, okay, let me see if I can do it. Guy invented by the cross, come on, he doesn't know. Right? <laughs> the benevolent. <Like, laughs> so, you don't know who Guido is? Guido Van Rossum? No. Guido Van Rossum. You don't know him? Yeah, I know the back name. I don't know the okay, Van Rossum, but you don't know. Okay. Okay. Benevolent picture for that. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, you know him. <laughs> so, like, the get R is the one that when you say like okay, for example, like you know like this S is the instance of this class, right? We all agree on that, right? Like this S mm -hmm. like for well, just create an mm -hmm. instance of this farm. Yeah. So like you get up to up, like whenever you on your on your classes, like you say S like the name, she we all like this is like like this is what the get R to be function is doing for you. Like this is the job of the get R. You know, whenever you say create like my instance dot something, that's the get out of it from here. That's what it's doing for you. Okay. And with Python you can change that. If you have the access to what do whatever you want with it. So which is what this decoration is kind of doing for us. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So what we are doing is that okay, we say, again we are getting the class because we we need we need the class to do that. And then we get the original like get attribute function. And again, like in Python, this is considered like a like this is how like you know in Python we don't have like a private kind of method or like static or something. But whenever you have like a donor kind of donor, they call them donor methods. They consider like private. But you can access them. You know, like on on other language like Java or you know like other languages, when you declare something as private, you know, no one can access. But with Python, it's just like a concept. But this is like the concept, like anything done that is considered a private. Something that if you don't know what you are doing, it's not allowed for you to go and change, because you can mess up your code, you can mess up your life, if you mess up your code. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. So here we are assigning this, okay, we're saying, okay, we're getting like, we are getting the hold of the original get attribute from the class here, we're getting, and then we are, like, we are redefining it. You say okay, you define a new like get attribute thing. You just pass the name. So like the thing whenever you say okay, like my styles dot that thing. So but here like we just do like simple stuff. They are just like printing the name. You say, you say okay, print get whatever the name is. Okay. Like in the spam case, we'll do like maybe print name, like like the name of the method, like you know, if the name of it or whatever, like. And then return like the original one, and then we pass again the name. And just down here, we change it again. Say, okay, now, now like it's here, we, like, this is where we actually change the thing. Here we say, okay, like the get attribute from my like original class here, now it's this thing. Okay, we say now like this, like, like the get attribute we define here. Okay, and then put it on the glass. Okay, but why is it get attribute and not get an ETR? Sorry? Isn't it get an ETR? Get a TTTR? No, an ETR. Oh, like 
set utter, you know, like you yeah. mean get utter. No, 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 if you like, you are targeting the get attribute, this is the one that we will like attribute look up. It's not get attribute. No, it's not get attribute. It's get attribute. But you can, you can, you can, maybe I'm mistaken, but even if But if I'm mistaken, this will work. So let's see. <laughs> All right? So like, do you understand what, what's, what's happening here? Do you all understand what's going on here? to see the that name So far, so good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Is it boring or is it? It's very new. Uh, oh, it's very for new for me. Yeah. Okay. But like, do you think you can do something? Like, do you understand? Like, okay, maybe like tomorrow, or, like in the future, you can do something like related. Yeah, it would be useful. Well, not so bad. Now we can, you know, we have access to change like attributes to copy in our content. 
classes, we can change, like, you know, we can change how the, uh, how the class works, right? You can change the planet, what if you can change the whole universe? I mean, that should be awesome, right? Yeah, you can do that in Python too. You know, you can do Google anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, like, you know, like, one of the benefits of Python you have access to, you can change pretty much everything the way you want. <laughs> okay, like, like so that's the world of the universe, you know, like <coughs> the power of the suit, that's you know. So. Okay, like the idea of a okay, let's see you meta class. Okay, uh -huh. So what is a meta class? You wanna have a copy of how you wanna know about meta classes? Have you used about meta have you used a meta class of it? Okay, part of the system. Well, how do you, it's a class of a class, right? Okay, like, meta class is like creating a type. Yeah, you know, like in you Python. Can use like, like a class that will output a class that you. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, exactly. It's a, it, it's a class, but like, we don't count only the class, it's more like, uh, like a type. You know, like in Python, you can have a type, right? Like, things have a type, strings have a type, everything. And then they all inherit from the type. There's a type in the yeah. Python source code, there's a type that all classes inherit from. That's why everything is a type, like, you know. I mean, like, everything. Okay? So, a meta class, again, is a class whose instances are classes. You know? Because, you know, you have classes that have, like, yeah, instances, they are not classes, but they're just instances of a class. But instance of a meta class is a class. Like you said, it's like, you know, the thing that creates classes for you. Okay? So, like, again, like, how class, blah, 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 blah. Meta class define the behavior of classes and their instances. Meta class is propagate down hierarchy. This is one of the most like important things here. Okay. Think of it as like the genetic mutation. So that's what meta And again, like in the Python world, meta class is kind of considered somehow like a bad kind of thing. You know, because like most people when you say, okay, like, you know, like that's why they meta class, they will say, no, they you know, stupid, don't do that. Hmm. You know, they will just shout at you. Well, again, if you look at the Python source code or like this libraries mm. or frameworks you use, like for example in Django, they use it like meta class. Sorry? Mm. Yeah, exactly. In Python, when you talk about that, it's like, you know, kind of, it's like black magic. No, like, you don't have control of it. It's not true, you have control. You, know, you just need to understand, like, what is really happening. So, that's, that's what meta class is. Again, the idea is like, you know, you just create like a normal class and then you immediately wrap the class to the curriculum. That's what we are trying to do. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I didn't put that on the slides here, but anyone knows like what happened on the, on like, uh, like in Python, what goes behind the scene when the class is being created? Like what is really happening before? Like you know, like when you say, okay, you have a class, right? Like let, uh, like this farm class. Like the like yeah, like this farm class here. Anyone knows like what happens? Like how everything works, and then we get this class. Like when you say this class is found with this like you have exactly created the class, like what happens do you know like like uh can you like deconstruct like everything here, like how everything goes, you know, like what happened behind the scenes? Anyone? Okay, like first of all, like when you like whenever like Python class is getting created, uh the class body get like separated, isolated from like the class here. Like the this thing, if you have like five methods or whatever, how many methods you have, they get isolated from the class. That's the first step. I think that's the first step. That's the first step. The second class, the class dictionary get constructed. The class dictionary. The class dictionary like which is this thing, right? <coughs> yeah, the class dictionary get constructed from the type. There's a method called don't the prepare. Yeah, there's a method called under prepare type. If you go to mm. if you go into the Python source code, 
prepare, or prepare, yeah, yeah, yeah prepare. Just don't have prepare and then don't have prepare and like do one last follow and then prepare and then last <coughs> And then the type will pass that like the name of the class, like in this case it's spam, and then it gives like a like base classes if like your class, let's say like a certain class maybe inherits from other classes, you know, we call them like base classes. So like prefer we the data prefer we get the name of the class, the basis, and then the class dictionary. Like these three things. Okay? That is the concept. And then the third step, the class body, remember the first step, Python will like isolate the body of the class from the like the class itself. Okay, now we have the body, separate. we have the class dictionary from the don't like parameter by passing in the name and in the base classes. And then the body of the class get executed using the exec, you know like exec function in Python. There's an exec for that, uh, exec, ex, I think ec, something like that. And then like Python use that to execute like the class body in, in, in the return dictionary that you get from that yeah you get from the don't the prepare method. Don't the don't the prepare, don't the prepare, prepare. No the don't that like the don't that. Sorry? Don't that. Don't that. Under. Uh, the under. That's what they call. Any any time you see like two underscores like this, they call don't the methods in Python. Don't the don't that. Don't that. Like underscore, you know, like it, it, you know, it's okay. It's kind of wrong to say underscore underscore we need underscore underscore, yeah. right? Uh, it's part of D U N D E R D yeah. under or double underscore. Yeah, exactly, double underscore. But they said don't that. Oh, don't that. class, if you have a class like our class spam is a type of spam class. 
So for here we are creating like a new site. So we inherit from site. We use the new keyword instead of the init keyword. Anyone knows the difference between this and the new and the number init? You know any difference? You know you know you know the number init, right? Yeah. Okay, which is like normally like what you see like 80% of the time. Right? Have you used this before? Anyone used this before? Okay. So the difference between the new and init, init is used for initialization whenever you know you initialize a function. But the new is used for like definition, like for creating something. So which is why we use the new when creating a method. So we have pass through like the class, like the class and like the class name, the basis, the class dictionary. So this is this is like this is all what a meta class is. Class name basis, class dictionary. And then for us, like, for us to be able to achieve what we are trying to do, we say, okay, <coughs> we create like this, we say, okay, we call super on the, on the class, we call it new, and then, you know, okay, we all know what super is, right? You know what super is, of course. Okay, so, I'm gonna that. so we just call super, we pass in the game, class name, class dictionary, and then we call give up method. Remember the this method you like we can assign like we can decorate all the methods at once. So we just call it here the bug methods. And then we pass in the class object. So you get the class object from here. And then we just return the class object. That's it. So, one, two, three, four, five, five lines again. Like again, this is like one of the advantages of doing these things like you know. Python layer programming. You know, you don't have to write a lot of code. You can just write like, you know, like five, ten lines of code that do like, you know, things that otherwise would have spent like, you know, like hundred lines to write. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You, just, you see, like just five lines or something, you have like, you know, you have eliminated a lot of things. Okay. So, yeah. still shorter than that. I think you can still shorten that. Sorry? I think you can shorten that. So, and this is how, by default, all your classes, <coughs> the American classes is, by default, is uh, this type. Whenever you create a class in Python, 
by default you get assigned like the meta class is this type by default. So whenever you create a class, it just like the meta class of that class is type. <coughs> For you to change that, you just say meta class equal to whatever the meta class is. In this case, our meta class name is the work meta. So that's how you change your meta class. You just say meta class equal to whatever the meta class you want to do. And then here is, okay, this is the base. <coughs> so, as you can see now, we are not decorating like any of these things. Okay, so when I say they changing the universe, this is what I mean. Because, you know, we are doing everything now in your manner. Because all, like all of them, they decorate <coughs> from base. And the very class of base is the of meta. So they all have now the capabilities of the of meta. Yeah, this is coming from the decorator. Mostly about writing, rewriting things. So when you talk about like decorators, you're talking about functions, like changing functions, which is normally what you like, you know, what you see like 80% of the time. Like class decorators, like you know, classes you will maybe see a little bit, but not very often. And meta classes, you know, class hierarchy. And maybe I would say like like two percent of the time you will see this. Only if you like, you know, want to do something really advanced, and then you go with these things. And you will have this here. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Now you have to change the video. You change everything. Yeah, that's the end of the slides. I wanted to add something, but I couldn't because, like I said, like you guys don't have a lot of kind of. Yeah, not, you know, I don't have a lot of kind of experience in Python. Like the mm -hmm. next thing I want to talk about is really, really crazy advanced. It's called descriptors. I mean, that's that, that, that's really advanced. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Descriptors. Like coding 
So you know, well, I mean, I can tell you about it, but you like, you, you just get lost. First, it's, it's like super advanced. Is it the thing that makes the process work in the background? Yeah, it kind of. Kind of. Okay. Like, but if you understand this scriptures, you can understand, like, you understand, like, you know, how Python really works. <laughs> okay. Like Python, Django, and everything. Maybe she can just show you something. I have, um, I have the Python source code in my laptop. Oh. It's nine ten. This is like the Python source code. This is this is Python. This is like the language you use. Oh, this is like Python here. This is the source code. Okay. Why well, I have it because I'm trying to get into the core Python development. I want to be one of the core developers in Python because I love it. You know. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if you like, we we are coders, right? If you if you really, if you have give something for a while, you know, contribute back, you know, give back to the community. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I saw something here. I'm just trying to see if I can show it to you. You see, like again, mm. everything is here. Like the parser, if you want to, because you know, like you know, like if Python is like the parser to parse all your things. If you want to know how, like. If, Watch and watch if you have it okay. here. I mean, again, some of it is on C, so you need to, because you know, like, this is the C Python project, you know, like, Python mm. is written in C, right? The C programming language? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you look, every, everything is here. You want, you want to know, like, you know, how things work, you can see everything is here. Okay. Again, like most of it is on DNC. So I saw something. I want to look at the link folder. Yeah. Just to find out how far the sound might be wrong. Okay. So I hope you enjoy it. Like it. Yeah, it's good. Thanks for your work. Yeah. Oh.
chatbot AI topic as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yes. actually came for that. Oh yeah, okay. Don't say that. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I also came yeah. for this as well. <laughs> this, this is something new. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, what, what you've told us today uh, is actually quite applicable in some ways, but um, hopefully our guys also, because uh, we have a bunch of programmers, we'll get it. Yeah. yeah, so thank you, thanks so much for coming, and uh, have a good night, guys. No worries. That was a piece of the Salasin.10 podcast area. It is hoped that you have enjoyed it. If you have any issues, please feel free to leave a comment through any of the channels. That was a piece of the Salasin.10 podcast area. It is hoped that you have enjoyed it. If you have any issues, please feel free to leave a comment through any of the channels.